Hello and welcome to the final episode in Beginner's Guide to Marvelous Designer for the Menus. In this tutorial we're going to look at the 3D menu now. So in the last two videos we looked at everything else. The toolbar at the top, the library, the object browser. Then we in the last video looked at the 2D window, so that's everything here. All these buttons and how to move and use the 2D browser. And now we're looking at the 3D. So like in the last episode, I'll just take you through what these buttons are, what they do, and how we can use them. So first off is the most important button, it's simulate. This arrow here begins the simulation for the cloth, so that we can now simulate, well, our cloth. And we can change how it works. Now you can see I'm moving about in the 3D view, Again, like all the other menus, it's completely move aboutable. So you can hold the middle mouse to pan. You can use the right mouse to rotate. The mouse wheel in moves out, the mouse wheel down zooms in, and you can use the left click with this uh, sort of move button here selected to move about all the simulation garments here. And we can get different patterns and wrinkles and shapes by doing so. So I'm going to turn simulation back off. So you'll see when it's off it's a grey arrow, when it's on it's um, yellow. Next along is the select mesh box tool. And what this does is it allows us to select parts of the mesh and then we can use that to sort of freeze them in time, pin them, so for example we could pin this bit here right we're going to select that and then if we simulate and try to move it you'll see that it will pin to the position we move it to but everything else simulating it won't affect it and then we can take the select tool if you do shift you can obviously add some Control is obviously remove, and we can delete all pins here. So that was with the pin box tool, and this is the select. So select means we can just select everything and deselect, and this pins things. So we can use Control and Shift to add or take away pinning. So this is fold arrangement, it means we can arrange how the folds actually work. So at a sewing we could fold this round, simulate and it will uh, sort of re-jump that way. But as you can see it now folds outwards here because that is what we told it to do. So it just allows us to artificially move the folds how we want to, to probably create more of a, a personalized shape for the clothing you're wanting if you can't get it right through simulation. And that is it for these four boxes here. Next along is pinning, well tacking. Tacking is similar to pinning, so tacking means we can shove a virtual needle through two parts of clothing. So if we tack those together and simulate, you'll see they now join together as if there is a pin holding them together. So what you do is you left click somewhere on the garment and then you'll see this blue line is following your mouse until the next place you click and it creates a tack there. The tack can only be joined between two places because it's a tack, it can't bend or be used multiple times. So that was this second button here. The first button before it is edit basting or basting. And that allows us to select these pins we've got, and we can delete, or we can move them. So you can delete and move them there, and it gives the garment a see-through look, so we can find those pins exactly where they are. And the next is Tack on Avatar. And that does exactly what it says. It's like the tack, except now we can stick it to our avatar. This one I won't imagine as a pin because otherwise we'd be pinning this to our avatar and that would hurt. 
but essentially we're just telling the fabric hey we want this to actually like end up here so simulate it like that and that way you can obviously shorten lengths of things but also make sure parts stick to the avatar so maybe if you want to try and create like a mask you might pin the part of it to the back of the head so it kind of folds around and then you can sew it together and make sure it gets the right shape and then using the edit basting we can delete them and return the simulation back to normal okay next along is these two weird looking exploding garments we have reset 2d arrangement and reset 3d arrangement for all so what that means is when we click reset 2d arrangement you'll see the clothing is no longer being simulated it has actually been reset to look exactly like it does in this 2d preview including where it starts in sort of the space here because of where it is placed on the 2d view so as we can see the chest piece starts around the shoulder area and goes across the chest and that's exactly where it's located here that's the back pieces are just next to that and as you can see it's right there so that would be to just basically reset everything into this view you could see and then you would have to move everything back around the avatar the one that's normally used so if I'm just going to control Z to undo this is reset 3d arrangement when I click this the garment explodes again but now each part is reset back to where we originally simulate it from so when I click simulate now we'll get that same effect we had before thought there was a weird issue with where that skirt was placed so again reset 3d arrangement and this way you could like edit shapes and if you have to like make a pocket for instance which needs to go behind the trouser leg you'd have to reset the 3d arrangement so you can then sew the pocket behind the trouser leg you can also do that individually by right clicking or selecting multiple garments in the 2d editor and going reset 2d arrangement or 3d arrangement for the selected as you saw there's a list of options here we're not going to go through them all but obviously we've got flip horizontally and vertically reverse the arrangement flip the wrap direction and you can superimpose them hide the pattern show all patterns so you can also like freeze now everything that's simulated this one isn't but that means things will automatically go back to this because this is sort of the place where everything connects to and it's frozen but we'll only go through them as we need them so this button here is for playing a motion so I showed you to drag a motion on we just go to motion drag it on and now when I click this running man here it turns on the motion animation okay we got the edit textures and graphics so if I wanted to shove a Photoshop graphic on we can now add that graphic onto the dress here because of where I selected it see I'm just adding them on here and then we can use the edit texture thing so that we can rotate it scale it move it but obviously as you can see that one is completely different to this one and that's because this one when I placed it I was getting this add graphic weight and height width and height and it just adds it to the size of the original photo piping is creating pipes along the seams and this would help give it a filling effect but also um, gives it sort of weight and things to run around the folds as well so if we go to piping here So you're going to double click on the end point and that will join, that will create some piping. And 
and now you can see the piping on the back here. So I can just create and add weight to certain parts of the garment, but it also creates piping for things if you need it, like in gloves, for adding space between fabrics and all the rest. And last but not least is press. And press is just like ironing the clothes. If we select this one and this one, or these two, then it just removes the folds joining these two together by ironing or pressing them together. So that's if you've got unwanted creases between two parts, you can just iron them out essentially. And that's all for those buttons there. Now I'll quickly go through these bits. These bits are a lot faster. So the top one is the t-shirts and these are all like technical points of sort of folds, sewing, uh, piping, that kind of thing, internal lines. And that's from this t-shirt at the top. So we can turn off the garment. We can turn off where we see pressure points. We can turn off where we see the seam lines, which are the ones sort of, if I move this like this, turn off seam lines, you'll no longer see the seams. Same for tacks and pins and buttons and piping. Next long is the avatar one, so we can show the avatar or not. Then we can show the arrangement points on the avatar, which we'll go into in another video. We can show the bounding volumes of the avatar. We can see the armature or bones of the avatar, and when we can see them now, we can also move them, rotate them into even unnatural positions. But this can help you create your own poses and animations, and just get a different pose that you want. And the next one along is measurements. So again, this all starts where the avatar's bounding volumes do, because this is where the avatar is sort of placed into the world. Whilst this one's being simulated, everything about her is still where she is kind of spawned into the world. And those are just like tape measurements around chest, arms, legs, that sort of thing. And this is like, we can see if it's a thick textured surface, thin, if we want a transparent surface, if we want to just see the mesh, if we want to see a strain map of where it's straining the most. As you can see, they all actually just sort of move around, uh, which is really jarring to be honest. But if we leave it on thick textured surface, we see the patterns and colours we've put on there. And last is the avatar textured surface. So right now it's on textured, but we can have monochrome, which removes all the textures. And you can see her eyes poking through, and that's kind of creepy. Or we can see the mesh of the avatar. For if there's any reasons you wanted to. We'll take that back to textured. So that is everything the 3D view has to offer that we're going to be worried about in the beginner's view. All these options here in the right uh, click menu you will come across as you use them and so right now because they're not necessarily to learn we are just we're not going to include them in the beginners tutorial so I hope you enjoyed the video leave a like if you did and dislike if you didn't if you like to see more from me hit that subscribe button I'm trying to upload as much as I can consistently without spamming you too much with videos so I hope you see you next time thank you and goodbye.